All right, welcome back to the garage. Still kicking ass on the Camaro here. Uh, one thing that I forgot to weld up last time, where these mini tubs sit in here, you make a little flange in the floor. You see that hole right there? Yeah, I wanna weld that little guy up because uh, I don't like having holes. Uh, I also fit in the uh, four link cradle here, this is a Ride Tech four link. Um, just kind of mocking it up, uh, kind of situating how I want to attach this thing. It, it comes with these thread forming bolts, which I'm not crazy about. I'm probably going to end up welding it into place and just want to figure out where I want to weld it. Probably along the front of this flange here, maybe around the side back here, and then as well kind of the same here along the side. Since this is mini tubbed, I've got to cut off the flange here. Cut off part of that, trim it down a little bit so the tire doesn't get into it, as well as figure out where I want to weld it. Weld it across there. Same thing on the other side. Um, for now, let's bust out the welder and weld, weld up that hole, and uh, then we'll see where we're at. Okay, I got that little hole welded up there. Looks real good. Um, as well, I went around and I marked out kind of where this uh, four-link cradle is going to sit and where I want to, where I want to weld it. Uh, I'm going to pull it off there, wipe off the E-coat from the frame rails as well as the powder coat from the uh, cradle in those areas that I'm going to be welded. Give it a shot of weld through primer and then uh, whenever the time comes, I'll be able to just slap it up there and, and weld it in place. Uh, whenever I do that, I want to have the car set and kind of level down here and then I can jack up underneath it, put pressure on this thing and fit it in real nice and tight up to the body. Use the, bo the weight of the body to, to press down on it to hold it into place. Anyway, uh, keep trucking. Okay, got those weld surfaces coated in weld through primer. I'm gonna put this cradle off to the side for now. Rotate this thing over a little bit and start looking at the hole in the rocker and see if we can't patch that up. Let's do that. Okay, here's that uh, driver's side rocker here. Uh, it's got, uh, got some holes there, 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 and back here that I welded up a little bit. Uh, I assume that it had like chrome trim that ran down through here. And I assume that this hole here caught a lot of water and rusted out. Now, if we look down in there, uh, let's take a look down in there. Okay, let's look down in there. It's really not, not that bad. Like most of the metal's pretty good. Yeah, it's a little, a little crusty and dirty down in there, but it's not, it's not super rusty, except right up in here. You see that? That's that's pretty gross. If I stick my little mirror down in here, I'll see if I, see if I can make this work. But yeah, you can see that's good metal, and then it gets crusty just right in the corner here, just right up where where it comes around this bend. So it's kind of in behind this piece here. There's not a lot I can do about that if I without cutting a big chunk of this out and really getting into it. I don't really want to do that. I don't think that I need to. Uh, let me dig around on this a little bit more. Uh, like I said, all this metal's good. It's good down in here, all around in here. It's just right in here. It's not so good. I'll dig around on it some more and let you know what I think. Okay, I don't know if I've mentioned it, but having a rotisserie here is awesome for being able to work on this. I opened up this hole, cut it out some more so that I could get in here and actually work. I got a uh, little wire wheel on an angle die grinder and a clean and strip disc and uh, went to work up in there and I'll see if I can show that to you. Okay, up in here, got it down to shiny metal in most of the areas, if you see that. Um, so I'm getting ready to start making a patch for this. One thing that really surprises me here is how thin this metal is. We put the old uh, feeler gauge on it. It's down to like 20, 23 gauge fits on there That's pretty thin. I might cut this out some more and just see See if there's thicker metal to be had I'll go ahead and cut uh, my patch piece. I've got some 18 gauge here I've got this metal shear that I picked up off Kijiji last year uh, It seems to be in pretty good shape got a good deal on it uh, Should be perfect for cutting little pieces of 18 gauge. So let's do that. Well, I only screwed that up a little bit. I mean, a little off the line. Um, it certainly worked all right. It's fast. 
faster than 10 snips, but uh, that's okay. I just, it's a patch piece. Okay, I uh, taped, taped up the area that I wanted to actually cut out and patch in here. And then I came around and cut that out uh, just above this body line here, which I taped off, and just below this upper body line here. Uh, that way I'm not um, welding right on the body lines, but just off a little bit. As well as I um, made the corners rounded so that I don't have uh, square corners on my patch piece. Uh, now what I'll do is I'll take, uh, I'll tape this up and use that as a template that I can then transfer onto my little piece of steel here and cut that out and uh, it should fit right in the hole. Let's do that. Okay, I've covered that with tape, uh, first going this way and then going this way. And if I press, I can see exactly where where the line is that I need to cut on. So I'll go around that with a, with a razor blade to cut that piece out, and then it'll stick right onto my piece of steel there. Now as I cut this out, I do the, uh, the straight areas first, the short straights and then the long straights, and then I can come back and do the corners, and it's still held in there nice and tight. And uh, yeah, I'll get this cut out of here in no, no time. Just like that, I've got a perfect uh, template for my patch piece. So I just got to cut out around the tap tape here and uh, see if it fits. Okay, and I got that uh, piece just about trimmed up. Still needs a little adjustment here and there, but it's, uh, it's fitting in there pretty decent. I want a little gap all the way around it so that I can weld it. Uh, one thing to keep in mind is that this rocker piece here is not uh, completely flat. I don't know if you can see see that, but there's a little bit of a gap where the, where this guy just kind of rocks right around. So I'm just uh, putting that over in the vise and uh, just kind of very gently bending that, putting a little bit of curvature to it. Let's see if I can get it out of here and show it to you. Anyway, uh, I'll show you later. Okay, I got the piece all trimmed up. It's looking real good. I uh, painted the back of it with some melt through primer to try and protect it from rusting. Uh, let's throw it in there and see how she fits. Here it is fit into place. I've got a nice little gap all the way around. The edges are nice and flush with the existing rocker panel. So uh, I think we can start welding her in. Let's do that. Okay, after a little quality time with the welder and the grinder, I got her all welded in there. Looks pretty good. It uh, had a little burn away there that I had to fix up, but uh, other than that, it's looking pretty good. If we look down the line, you can see here the body lines are still pretty good. It looks pretty pretty flat in there. Here's the shot from the other end. See how this looks. I also welded up all these holes and stuff. So, yeah, not not too bad for a shitty old car. Anyway, let's keep trucking. All right, well, I've still got the car in this orientation. I want to go through and uh, clean up some of these welds. Here's where, where I welded the uh, trunk floor drop-off in, as well as up here, the outer wheelhouse where it uh, welds in there. I need to do a little fix on that, as well as grind down some of these, smooth them up real nice, make them look good. So I'm just going to do a little bit of that stuff, and then we'll do something else. Okay, I got all those areas there cleaned up, welded up, ground down, looking good. I'm going to uh, slide this over this way, rotate it over, and then I can start working on the rocker on the other side. Let's get to it. Okay, the rocker on this side is not nearly as nice as the one on the other side. Big hole here, a bunch of smaller holes all the way down. Uh, first thing I'm going to do is uh, bust out a clean and strip disc and clean these all up, see kind of where I'm at, see what needs to be cut out, see what's good metal, all that good jazz, and then start making little patches. Start at the back and work my way to the front and get her done. Okay, I cleaned up these areas with the clean and strip disc, got all the paint and all the rust off of them. Then I uh, kind of taped them up, uh, taped them up outside of where the pitting was. So whenever I go over these, I, I may open up the holes a bit more to get rid of the pitting in those areas. Um, but uh, I'm going to start making patches now. I taped them off. So I've got to uh, Got an area to focus on and uh, got some metal tools over here. So I'm going to start making some patches. Let's do that. Okay, covered the hole with tape, cut out the hole with the tape and uh, stuck it on a piece of steel. Now I can cut this out in 10 snips, make a perfect little patch for that hole. Let's do it. After a little fine tuning, I got a piece that fits in there 
pretty pretty good. So now I can weld that, start welding that guy in. Let's do it. Okay, I got that uh, little patch there welded in and ground down. It's looking pretty good. I uh, come over here to do the next one, and yeah, it, it had some pretty good pitting along this side, so I just uh, wallered that hole out with a carbide burr. This little guy right here works really good for making holes in steel. If you focus on it, you'll see it's nice and sharp. Anyway, uh, anyway, I did that. What's your guys' opinion? Like, how much pitting is too much pitting whenever you're doing rust repair? Like, you just go ahead and open that up and make a bigger patch, or do you just uh, deal with it? I'll probably end up cutting that out because it's just going to lead to future rust, and I don't like future rust if I'm working on it right now. Anyway, uh, cut a little piece to go in there. Uh, pro tip for you, mark it on the back side so you know the orientation that it goes in whenever you're doing these odd-shaped patches because if you try and put it in this way, it almost fits, but you'll end up cutting it down and it not going in properly. So anyway, that's what I'm doing, getting her done. All right, for the smaller hole here, uh, what I did is I used a step bit and I drilled it out to where it's a nice circle. And then uh, to make my patch piece again, use the tape. Uh, however, it's really hard to hang on to a small piece of metal like this. So I weld a little bit of coat, coat hanger to it. And uh, then I'm able to shape it a little easier as well as fit it in the hole a little easier. So that should make patching this one a little easier. And then uh, just cut that off whenever I'm done. Okay, I'm getting them patched up here. I just have these last two to, to weld in and then I can start thinking about this big hole here. Um, so far it's doing all right. This metal's really thin, so it's burning through really easily. And some of my welds are kind of porous. So once I get these welded in, I'll go over, over all these and fix any, any little imperfections. Well, make sure they're all welded up nice and solid and uh, get rid of any of these little holes and stuff like that. Then grind it all down and make it look pretty. So yeah, just about just about to get her whooped. Okay, I got them all welded up, cleaned up all my pinholes and stuff like that. If I lay a straight edge across it, you can see, maybe you can see, it's pretty, pretty straight, pretty good. All the way down through there. I mean, there's, there's a small gap in some areas where it shrunk up a little bit, but for the most part, it's pretty good. Now I can move on to this big hole. Now, first things first, lay a straight edge across here. You'll see there's a gap. There's a pretty good dent. Let's see if I can get you in here. Yeah, see that pretty good gap right in there? It's because this is, this is bent in. <clears throat> they ran into something or something happened. So I want to pull this out. Now, I don't have a slide hammer or anything like that, so I've got to be inventive and make stuff. I'll show you what I'm going to do. Okay, to pull that dent, I've made a couple little tools here. Uh, what I can do is I can get a C-clamp in this hole and get in behind there. So I welded a piece of flat steel, just a piece of scrap to that, so that I can slide that in behind there. Let's see if it'll actually work. Yeah, slide that in there behind like that. But then I'm just pressing against the, uh, the rocker panel on the outside here. So I need something to stand off that. So more scrap metal to the rescue. Uh, just tack welded a scrap piece of angle iron, a scrap, scrap piece of flat bar in there that'll sit in here just like this. And so I can uh, get the C-clamp on it. Whenever I screw it down, it'll pull that dent out. So let's give it a shot, see if it works. Got her, got her clamped up here and uh, you can see there's a little bit of bow on this steel here, which means it's pulling this guy out, which means it should be working. Should work. Let's pull her off there and see if it's any better. Uh, yeah. Well, my little clamp mechanism worked okay, but uh, as I was pulling it out of there, I noticed that my C-clamp is just about the right shape and size to butt up against that inner structure there. And then I can toggle it around like so and pull, push on it this way and pull that dent out a little bit. And as well, I've got another clamp here that can reach in just a little bit further. And uh, let's check, check to see how, how close it's getting. Uh, yeah, it's, what am I doing there? Yeah, it's getting better. I don't know if you can see that, but anyway, 
it's getting better. I'm getting her, getting her close. So anyway, uh, get that dent pulled out of there and then I'll look at how much of this I want to cut out. Okay, I've taped it off where I want to cut it out and get rid of all of this deep pitting, kind of all the way around. And it should be good, so let's cut that out and make a patch. Okay, got my patch piece cut out and trimmed to fit and uh, lined up and about ready to weld her in there. Let's just get this baby finished up. Okay, got her all welded up here. She's looking real good, real happy with it. Uh, now I just need a little quality time with the grinder, take those welds down and see how smooth it is. Let's do that. Now when I'm grinding down my welds and, and cleaning up the metal, I like to use a two inch um, roll lock on an angle die grinder. It gives me lots of control. I grind away just the weld and, and leave the, the rest of the metal alone. I was using these cheapo grinding discs. This is 80 grit that I got off Amazon and they're garbage. They're just junk. I recently acquired some, uh, some of these guys from Walter and they are magical. I got these, uh, top cut uh, sanding discs. Here's the different grits. The uh, backing pad will indicate what, what grit you got. Got, uh, let's see, a 36, a 50, uh, 36, a 50, a 60, an 80, and a 120. And uh, they work fantastic and they last. Like I've been grinding this one, using this one for three days and it's still perfect. Whereas these I use for a couple hours and they're garbage. And the, the harder, the rougher grits, like this is 36, the nubbins just fall off of it. Even the 24s, like it's, they're just trash. Throw those away, get some good ones. They're awesome. And she's done. This rocker is repaired. I can move on to bigger and better things. And I'm sure it's not perfect. I'm sure some people have higher standards than I do. But uh, for a guy just learning, I think it's pretty good. Um, I, you know, I told you on the other side that this, this rocker's got a bow to it. Uh, I, tried to, uh, I tried to put the bow into, into my patch piece, but I didn't get enough in there. You can see that there's just a gap. But there's not a lot I can do about that, and I don't really care because I may paint this black, I may undercoat it, I may put chrome trim on it. I don't know what I'll do with it yet, but it's repaired for the time being. Now I've got some little touch-up welding to do in around this wheel, wheel opening, grind welds, stuff like that. But I'm not going to bore you with all that, um, as well as this this piece here needs to be finished up, welded in into place and cut down, trimmed down, stuff like that. But like I said, I'm not going to bore you. With all this stuff in this video, I'll bore you with it in the next one. Anyway, thanks for watching. Cheers.